Hello and uh, welcome everyone. My name is EdlerGG and this is a video about hotkeys, quick cast, basic hotkey setup and a little bit of hotkey grid and layout theory. I think hotkeys are generally very controversial and I think it is super important for every player that before you start playing a game that you make sure you get the most efficient hotkey setup you can get because later on it might be very hard to um, get rid of bad habits. We will also take a closer look how we can set up um, the quick cast that Dota has to offer and how we can be more efficient as a player using the quick cast feature. We will also take a closer look at what hotkeys we need and what hotkeys we can drop and basically uh, what we have to bind to play Dota efficiently. If you like this kind of content, go to gamersguys.com. For just $10 a month, get your replays analyzed, watch masterclasses with pro players, join weekly coaching sessions, win prizes, and more with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. Let's start with the theory first. The grid or the layouts that we can use is bound to the modifier areas to the left and the right side of the keyboard. So either this area here or this area here, because we need uh, a lot of modifiers. We need the alt modifier, we need the shift modifier, and sometimes we even need the control modifier. So we are basically bound to the left and the right side of the keyboard. Then we have good um, key keys basically, um, on the left and on the right side that are easy to reach basically depending how we usually position our hand on the keyboard and we have hard to reach um, keys and basically when we need to move our fingers around or even need to readjust our hand position uh, more muscle parties will be involved and the movement itself will be slower compared to if you just press Q and W uh, compared to if we maybe need to press the T or the 6. So basically you want to keep everything um, that is often used, like frequently used or is time critical, should be around our standard hand position and the harder to reach ones should be like um, used for not uh, time critical actions so for courier delivery for example so we can basically use the top uh, the f keys for example for not that important stuff that uh, is sometimes used or in every game used of even frequently used but not time critical and the good hotkeys that are easy to reach without a lot of hand movement need to be used for time critical stuff another thing we need to take a look at is the combo potential so we basically want to set up hotkey rows um, vertically or horizontally um, to set up combo stuff. That's why we often see the standard grid is like Q, W, E, R, D, F for spells. So you can basically um, just press the entire row without much hand movement. Another thing is that we also can set up a vertical um, combos so for example I use the 5 and the T or the sticky and the quick buy so basically all actions um, that are comboed together should be together either horizontally or vertically it's also basically super important for heroes that just require you to mash a lot of buttons like Skyrim match so you want to have everything uh, in the right place so you can just mash all the buttons in the proper order from left to right for example and you also need to think about where we put the items because some heroes require items uh, for the combo execution as well so they should be also around um, the grid. Mouse hotkeys also need to be um, set up properly so if you use your mouse to combo stuff so you press Q, W, E, R, for example, and have a blink on your mouse button 5 and you start with the blink, that's completely fine. But uh, if you use, for example, the mouse button 5 and the mouse button 4 um, to combo stuff, and then you need your um, keyboard as well in between, 
uh, that's bad. So basically you can do the uh, mouse button five first, then combo some stuff on your key uh, on your keyboard and then you follow it up by mouse button four or reverse, but don't mix it. Also, I would not recommend to start with mouse button 5 and mouse button 4, generally speaking, because your thumb needs to move on a lot of um, mouse um, layouts. So they might be together, they might not be together. On my mouse, for example, I need to move my thumb uh, to the back to reach the mouse button 4 and my thumb is on the mouse button 5, so the mouse button 5 is really good for combo plays. So blink dagger into a combo, for example, while mouse button 4 is bad because the thumb movement requires a lot of time that is lost. So hotkeys should follow a simple logic, should be comboed if possible and should not be randomly chosen. If we take a look at other games like World of Warcraft for example, uh, professional players have up to 60, I have seen players with 64 hotkeys. So they require a logic else they cannot execute and I think it's super important that in Dota 2 we also um, build our entire hotkey set around logic. Before we move to the abilities and items I want to talk about the basic hotkey setup first. The things we need to bind under unit actions is select hero. Another thing that we need is attack move and force attack. If you want to know what this exactly does, please take a look at the last hitting video. So those two things should be bound. Anything that has to do with control groups will be moved into a separate video. For shop actions, we want to bind the courier. It doesn't have to be a good hotkey because we usually do not want to select the courier itself. And we want to bind the courier deliver items as well as the purchase quick buy. It is important to mention that uh, Dota 2 or the hotkeys themselves uh, inside the interface are not aligned very well. So we need this on the next page and we also need this on the next page. So keep in mind the hotkeys. Another thing that we need is the chat wheel, customized chat wheel. I would recommend that you use a hotkey that you can reach but that's not time critical because a lot of communication can be done with the chat wheel itself so i highly recommend that you bind actions in the game that are required onto the chat wheel and that you get used to using the chat wheel using a decent hotkey another thing that can be useful is of course the pause and the scoreboard uh, for support players, the scoreboard is very valuable because support players usually have to check the game state and the scoreboard tells you a lot about the game state itself because I mainly play uh, position 5, especially in competitive environments. I need the scoreboard on a really good hotkey. So space, of course, is probably a bit overkill. For supports, it can be really good. Let's move on to the advanced hotkeys. So if we press advanced hotkeys on the bottom, we get into this panel. So the learn ability is completely overrated because if you want to skill an ability, you can simply use control and the ability hotkey. The upgrade talent can be useful, but uh, I'm not using it. The only thing I basically click is the talents, but you can bind it and use the one or the two key to select the talents. The move command is only required if you use right click deny on. Uh, take a look at the auto attack video if uh, you want to know what exactly this uh, stuff does. But usually we don't need this. The directional move is also a very interesting setting that only a few heroes need. So heroes that require to basically face in the proper direction. So the only hero that comes to my mind is Shadow Fiend. So if you get blocked and want to race into a certain direction, you can force a directional move so you look into the direction. Patrol can also be really useful for summons, uh, for scouting purposes, and it's not really required. One of the most important keys in the game is to cancel current action. It allows you to cancel um, spells and auto attacks mid animation. So this key is super important and needs to be placed on a good spot. Select all other units uh, will be used later on in the micro video. 
activate glyph and activate scan uh, are also very useful but I would not bind them to like super good keys uh, I'm using the F5 and F6 and make sure they're like next to each other the toggle auto attack is also super useful but doesn't need to be on the best hotkey then shop actions um, courier speed burst and courier shield they should be lining up hotkey wise with the courier deliver items so what you can do is basically make a line of three hotkeys with those three and either put the courier shield first or last and make sure if you want to deliver items just press uh, the hotkeys in the order so you press like f1 f2 or f2 f3 so the items get delivered with a speed burst also the purchase sticky should line up somehow with the purchase quick buy so you can use 5.6 for example, I use 5T, so I either buy out the sticky or the quick buy. Tech stash items can also be useful sometimes, but you can also do this manually, it's most of the time not very time critical. Open shop should also be a decent hotkey, I use F2, uh, because you frequently use it if you want to buy stuff, so it should be bound. Interface, uh, the console is really useful uh, to change stuff and uh, rebind keys and uh, use other stuff. So I recommend that you bind it and you learn how to use it. And then we come to the hotkey uh, options themselves. Quick cast on key down. So it's really important if you press the key, the spell is cast instead of when you release the key. A double tap ability to self cast is also important so you can just double tap stuff to cast it on yourself and the smart double tap allows you to press alt and self cast stuff that way is also pretty useful uh, shop always uses hotkeys well it depends uh, i don't recommend it but uh, if you get used to it it can be nice then um, legacy keys are for players that use old school uh, Warcraft Dota hotkeys um, but I'm still not sure if this is fully supported and updated at the moment so use it uh, at your own discretion uh, Windows command key bound can be useful if you need additional keys and bind keys based on the keyboard position is also very interesting if you switch keyboard layouts from English to European for example um, it will keep um, the hotkey position rather than the letter or the character itself so if you switch from Z to Y or Y to Z you can basically keep the position Then enable advanced quick cast auto cast hotkeys uh, will show you this uh, interface for the abilities instead of the standard interface which will be needed later on when we talk about quick cast itself so let us take a look at QuickCast. QuickCast basically removes the second input that chooses the target location. So any action that usually requires a target marker or selecting a target will simply try to target whatever is on your cursor. So it removes target markers and AOE markers. So if we take a look at this raptor, if we place a kinetic field, we don't have the target marker itself. And if we press Alt and bind it, we get the target marker again, but we need to execute one more action. So QuickCast is pretty fast when it comes to that. The problem with QuickCast is that we can lose accuracy uh, in the process and we have a higher chance of misclicking stuff because we simply lose um, the second target marking basically so whatever we execute gets executed instantly on the other hand quick cast can be very useful and is basically required to play certain heroes like earth spirit invoker and skyrath mage if you try to play these heroes without quick cast you handicap yourself because uh, the actions have like super low cast points um, some of them have basically zero cast point so the faster you can press the buttons the faster the combos will be played and the less uh, room for error is there and uh, the, most of the actions are very time critical so being fast is super important so generally we are faster on anything that's not already quick cast um, there's a few spells that are basically uh, baseline quick cast um, for example the lichen hole 
Uh, it has no targeting, so you just press it, so it's basically quick cast. But uh, any other option that requires targeting, as long as your mouse is above the model you want to target, is faster, basically 50% less input. So a standard Skyref combo would be one mouse input, and then you press Q, W, E, R, for example, so you have five inputs. Um, with an item, if you add a second item, you have six inputs. Uh, if you do this without quick cast, you have 12 inputs. So quick cast is pretty useful for these heroes. The problem with quick cast is the items um, that we usually self cast on double tap um, need to be adjusted a bit in the use cases and the usage itself. So if we bind something to quick cast in our inventory, for example, like a Yult Scepter. So usually if we don't play with quick cast, we can simply double tap and then it will target ourselves. The problem is there is no target input. So we lose the natural ability to double tap stuff uh, to self cast it onto ourselves. So basically we need to bind the quick cast key with an alt and this will give us the target marker back and then we can simply alt double tap to self cast. To set up standard uh, quick cast settings you just head to the quick cast tab and bind your usual hotkeys that your abilities are on and um, if you want to have target markers sometimes you can simply bind the quick cast key in combination with alt so when you press alt and the normal hotkey you will gain the normal cast but in most cases i would simply bind the quick cast if you want unit specific um, keys you can simply press the unit specific hotkey tab and choose the hero because it can be very very useful to unbind certain things when it comes to quick cast. So big teamfight ultimates uh, that have target markers that you should not miss uh, should be put off quick cast. So an example would be Faces Void's Chronosphere or Dark Willow's Bramble Maces. These abilities should never be put onto quick cast. Another example would be Mars Arena. Try to hit an arena with quick cast on. It's really, really hard. So simply unbind the quick cast so what you do is you delete the quick cast key and just put in the normal cast key and then you're set for the items we also need to bind the quick cast so i highly recommend that you bind three quick cast or four quick cast keys in your inventory i use mouse uh, four five exhaust flex and the r and for the normal cast i add two additional hotkeys that are not bound as quick cast. Those two or three uh, additional uh, off quick cast keys are basically used to switch words, for example. Um, so you can simply double tap it because if again, um, if you want to double tap this stuff, we need to press Alt and we place the words by accident. So make sure you have at least two um, off quick cast. Uh, inventory slots. Another thing is that a lot of players that are used to uh, normal cast and switch to quick cast have trouble using like glimmer caps and four stars. Because first of all, um, in hectic team fights, it might be really, really, really useful to have the target marker before we use it. So we already press it, uh, wait for the right moment, and then we use it. And that's what normal cast can be used for as well as um, allowing an easy double tap because uh, we saw on the yield scepter if we just put it onto an off quick cast slot we can simply double tap it to self cast can be super useful for four stuff glimmer cap and yield scepter another thing that we want is uh, tp scroll and um, the neutral slot so i would also recommend binding those and I have uh, the neutral slot only on quick cast, no normal cast, and the teleport scroll can be on um, normal cast as well. So we can basically press the hotkey and aim the teleport scroll. If we put it on quick cast, we uh, might misclick, and this is really bad. So teleport scroll should always be on normal cast. Let's come to our conclusion. 
so quick cast is really really strong but it's not always the best option i think most of the stuff is already be on quick cast anyway so a lot of abilities basically in hand inherited quick cast so what we need to decide as a player is on which heroes it is useful and on which heroes it isn't or generally streamline um how we use the quick cast so basically you could um, put all aoe abilities off quick cast or stuff with target markers or just big teamfight ultimates and put all of them on normal cast and just run standard stuff on uh, quick cast and the critical stuff on normal cast to not lose accuracy in critical moments especially during late game for the inventory we usually want uh, four to three quick cast slots and um, two to three normal cast slots tp always off quick cast so we do not misclick and i think if you're not using it yet it is never too late to switch to quick cast um, i take myself uh, as an example because in back in the days in uh, warcraft 3 or dota 1 there was no quick cast we simply didn't have the ability to use quick cast and uh, this is also the reason why i have like a super weird setup compared to most uh, players nowadays and um, i did like approximately 12 to 14 thousand dota 2 games without quick cast without any trouble um, i made it without quick cast into the top 200 of the leaderboards but at some point when you want to expand your hero pool and you just want to be faster it is very beneficial to switch to quick cast so i could play heroes like earth spirit and skyrath mates and uh, also invoker without any trouble and this is only because i swapped to quick cast so even if you already played a lot of games don't hesitate to switch to quick cast it's very natural you probably need like 10 to 20 games to get used to it and after 50 to 100 games you will not uh, miscast stuff and at some point you will even get used to the uh, alt press to self uh, cast your inventory and at this point you basically transition completely to quick cast so really do not hesitate don't be scared just play a few normal games play a few turbo games get used to it and basically be significantly faster than before in time critical moments. So my name is Edler G and thanks for watching.